Hey guys, it's me here. So today I'm at the vet school and I'll be talking to a Boas nurse, Lydia. So let's take a peek and see what she's up to today. Come along with me. two-year-old pug uh -huh. here for regular bowel assessment All right. um, where hopefully we determine whether she will need treatment or not. Oh cool, well before that a little bit about yourself. So I'm obviously Lydia, um, <laughs> I've worked here now for about a year and a half Mm -hmm. um, in that time, I've really sort of specialised and focused on BOAS assessing, so mainly pugs, French Bulldogs and English Bulldogs, but we do tend to see Pekingese and Shih Tzus and we had a Staffordshire Bull Terrier the other day, which was a bit random, but it's still learning and it's still interesting, especially towards the research Strange side of things for BOAS. I actually was a head nurse before this and we had a huge caseload of brachycephalic patients, which mm -hmm really sort of spurred me on to be interesting in the quality of life and welfare cases that these guys sometimes suffer with because of their breathing. But yeah, and then this job came up and here I am. Cool, brilliant. So first of all, Lydia, please tell us what is BOAS? So BOAS stands for Brachycephalic Obstructive Airway Syndrome. And in a bit more detail, it's basically the overgrowth or a huge amount of soft tissue in these types of dog skulls. Mm -hmm. I just mentioned we commonly see pugs, French Bulldogs and Bulldogs with this issue but it is becoming more apparent in other breeds too right. um, and actually we are bringing out some research on that soon so look out for that. Cool. We have some really super useful posters and information on our website which I'm sure May is going to link up to this interview definitely have a look at but yeah that that's really the basis of it and as we perform the bath assessment i can go into a bit more detail as to why we perform these right let's do it yay so what is the first part of the assessment so we generally start with a, a health exam so that's performed in a consult room by one of the students and a surgical resident from that we determine if there's anything else other than BAS that we should be aware of before performing the assessment because there are other sort of health conditions that can mimic some of the noises that they create especially with the lungs etc. Then when they come through to the lab the first thing we actually do is we have a good listen to the upper respiratory tract using okay. a stethoscope mm -hmm. and we try to grade the noise based on how loud the noise is and where the noise is coming from okay. Yeah. So this patient here I think you can hear some stir to there and I th you should be able to hear that on the camera as well. And at the moment, because we can hear that without the stethoscope and very clearly through the stethoscope, that's technically a grade two. Right. The second part of the assessment, and this is a really useful tool, and I don't think it's used commonly enough at the moment for assessing these dogs, is an exercise tolerance test. And what that's going to determine is how these patients cope with exercise and heat as well. Commonly these dogs have lots of heat stroke issues, especially in the summer months, and a lot of these dogs can't exercise anything further than five minutes. After they perform for a three minute run, or we might get a ball out and play with them in the lab for three minutes, mm -hmm. we then come back and we repeat listening up to the upper respiratory tract um, noises. If they are louder, if they are a different type of noise, if we can determine sort of if they're coming more from the nasal passage or like the larynx, for example, yeah. we can then usually pinpoint what type of obstruction it is and what grade. So technically for this patient, at the moment, pre-exercise, she is grade two. I think we're getting into a weird area here. So now the plan is to place the patient into the whole body barometric plethysmography chamber, which is this lovely box here. And this box, just to reassure everyone, is completely um, sort of monitored. We've got temperature checks in there, humidity checks in there, CO2 checks in there. So we're not gonna starve the dog of oxygen or cook them. But the whole point of this is to hopefully determine a BOAS index, so a percentage that the airflow is affected by BOAS. Um, and from doing this, hopefully it matches our functional grading score and then that gives a, a definite and more sort of evidence-based grade of BOAS. Cool. There's 
actually a lot of components that make up these traces and it's it's a mixture of what this is measuring sort of what we're looking at on the screen um, and it's really important that we don't just base everything wholly on what's happening in there we take into consideration the assessment that we've performed the functional grading clinical signs that the owners report happen at home and what we're sort of presented with today mm -hmm. however these traces that we've got here mm -hmm. so we have got inspiration and expiration okay so inspiration being under the line expiration being over the line mm -hmm. there's some very obvious vibration in the traces and that can be anything from nature or snoring, it could be the palate vibrating, um, there's a combination of things that, that can represent this obstruction that we can see. Um, and the other thing that we've got as well is some peaks, which also indicate that there is obstruction in this dog's airway. Um, yeah, I think that's everything that yeah. we can chat about, yeah. There are other benefits to performing these assessments. So we are super, super lucky that we get to perform research here day to day on the surgical and non-surgical cases. Anything that we record, it goes onto a giant database and hopefully the end goal is to help breed out some of these breathing issues that these, these dogs sort of have to um, suffer with on a day-to-day -day basis. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna demonstrate some of the research data that we collect. So we, we take measurements using a tape measure of the skull. We also take a swab of some cells in the mouth. We take a picture of all these patients and we also take an audio recording of any upper respiratory noises. Um, and like I said, these are all then grouped together on this dog's individual research profile on a data entry site. Let's see. Look at that waggy tail. <laughs> so we've got 10 whip. Mm -hmm. We have got 12 length and then we just need to do the mandible. Mm -hmm. And we've got 11 there, so 10, 12, 11. Well done, you can have a treat now. So we are maintaining social distance <laughs> to carry out this interview. So thank you so much, Lydia, for telling us how to do the assessment. Clearly, there is a need for doing these assessments because brachycephalic dogs have certain health issues. Could you tell us more about these health issues and how us, the general public, or vets and vet students can do about spreading awareness about these issues? I personally feel now I've worked with these patients for a year or so that there's just not enough education out there around the, the welfare and the quality of life issues that these guys sort of suffer with because of the brachycephalia, the BOAS that they then suffer with. I hope that by generating more awareness that people are going to become more educated, creating discussions so amongst other vets and nurses, making sure that they're aware of what these guys sometimes go through um, if they suffer but with BOAS and then they can then educate owners that they see in the day-to-day -day practice. We should get the message out there. We also run a Facebook and an Instagram account called Cambridge Research BOAS Group and what we do on there is do really informative, educational but also quite sort of simple to understand posts about the, all sorts of different things so we go into more detail about regurgitation which is a co common clinical sign for these guys, exercise intolerance, heat intolerance um, and we, we really try and target everyone with these posts, it's not just vets, it's not just nurses and it's not just breeders and owners, it's everyone because um, I think the only way that we can sort of improve what these guys suffer with is by working together. Yeah, that's so true, we need to work together Yay, we to do. make sure that yeah, these guys get taken care of. Right, so I'll leave you to finish off your day, Lydia. Thank and you thank so you much. Thank you so much. Bye. Say bye.